So news about the Harry Potter TV show has been flying around recently and there have been a bunch of updates from the showrunners. There have also been some pretty substantial casting rumours, two really big ones that have been everywhere, all over my timelines on Twitter and Facebook. One of them seems to be quite controversial. So let's jump in and talk about it. So we'll start with the slightly less controversial rumour. We have Brett Goldstein, who has been rumoured as being cast as Hagrid. Now look, I know Goldstein mostly for his role in Ted Lasso. So I hear him with a London accent, which is not Hagrid. Hagrid is quite clearly a Somerset kind of guy. He clearly talks a bit like this. And look, I'm sure Goldstein can switch up his dialect if he needs to. But then again, maybe they want to make Hagrid like a little bit cockney? A little bit of a wheeler dealer, a bit of a Del Boy type. After all, in The Philosopher's Stone, he comes away from the pub having talked a stranger into giving him a dragon's egg. Stranger. So, I don't know, maybe they're looking to make him less of a country bumpkin to separate the show from the films. But, like, I really hope not. Hagrid is about one impression I can half do okay. I certainly can't do Professor McGonagall very well. One thing I will say about Goldstein is that he's not only an award-winning actor, but also an award-winning writer. Like, he was one of the writers on Ted Lasso, which he's won awards for. He co-created the Apple TV sitcom Shrinking, which is very good if you haven't seen it. So I'm a bit torn when I think about his writing and how that might play a role here. Hagrid is mostly... A bit of a comic relief character, right? He's goofy, he's naive, he's a bit childlike, and having a proven comedy writer and comedy actor in this role could be a stroke of genius. Like if you ever watch outtakes or deleted scenes or behind the scenes interviews from comedy shows and movies, you'll know so many great hilarious moments come from genuinely funny people improvising, ad-libbing, riffing with one another, just throwing things out there until something hilarious comes up. And so those moments could be great for a character like Hagrid. That said, in particular in the early movies, he's gonna be acting opposite children in their like early teens who are early in their careers, and would they want to be riffing and improvising with him in these scenes? Are they going to be confident enough or funny enough to bounce back and forth with him? I'm not sure. And the last thing you want is for it to feel forced, right? To feel too try-hard. There's a scene in the Half-Blood Prince movie where Harry, Ron and Hermione are joking in the burrow. And they're like, oh, how old is Dumbledore? What, 150? <laughs> and the joke is not funny and the fake laughter is terribly done. And I actually like the Half-Blood Prince film more than most people, I think, but that moment goes through me like nails on a chalkboard. And that sort of brings me to one of my slight reservations, which is that Harry Potter is not a sitcom, right? It might have funny moments, but those are usually little quips and small lines of dialogue rather than comedy situations. Goldstein's sitcom background might not fit with whatever kind of light-hearted moments this show will allow for, like they might be too low-key for him, too fleeting in their comedy. And the other thing is that I feel like the films kind of made Hagrid a bit of a caricature. Like when he's first introduced, he gives Harry a cake that suggests he can't even spell happy or birthday. Like this isn't from the books. Hagrid is a bit of an oaf in the books, but in the films they made him completely illiterate. Like a complete bumbling idiot. And so I worry that casting a comedy writer and a comedy actor in this role will kind of make Hagrid even more of a joke. But Hagrid isn't a joke, he is heartfelt and kind, he loves so fully. Sure, he didn't finish school, but he's not stupid. He just prioritizes weird things like dragon eggs. That said, Goldstein did play Roy Kent in Ted Lasso with a lot of heart, and it ended up being a really deep, multifaceted character. So I don't know, maybe he does bring balance to Hagrid perfectly after all. Should we talk about the more controversial casting rumour now? So a big rumour is flying around that Papa Aseadu is going to be cast as Severus Snape. Let's, uh, let's address the elephant in the room, shall we? He's not white, and I think that's fine. Are there some descriptions in the books that maybe suggest Snape has to be a white man? Sort of. Not really. I had a look through and there's one main one, right, that sort of describes Snape in a way that might suggest he's white. He's described as being a thin man with sallow skin, a large hooked nose, and yellow uneven teeth. Now I didn't know what sallow skin meant, I thought it meant kind of gaunt looking, so I looked it up. It's often a sign of aging, and it's a change in like the hue of the skin. People with pale or pink skin tend to see like a yellow hue if they're experiencing sallow skin. But importantly it says it's uncommon that it affects people with darker skin. Not impossible, not it never happens, or it can't happen, just uncommon. But even if sallow skin did only apply to white people, that still doesn't mean Snape has to be white. No part of his character, or his story, or his intricacies, his journey, none of that is rooted in whiteness. Snape being a person of colour 
doesn't detract from any part of his story. Now, Papa Aseadu is a very handsome man, and that might cause issues because Snape is absolutely not supposed to be handsome. He's slimy and greasy and gross. He's supposed to make your skin crawl. But I'm sure the costume and makeup department can sort that out. The point is, adaptations take creative liberties sometimes. Even if the books outright said, Snape is a white man, who cares, right? In the films, Harry didn't have green eyes. Hermione didn't have buck teeth. Dumbledore became a whole other person halfway through. Snape, Lily, James, Lupin, Sirius, they were aged up more than a decade. They took so many creative liberties in the films. They made changes. Did those stop anyone from enjoying them? Did they ruin the characters? Absolutely not. And so if you'll let me get on my soapbox just for a second, I find it interesting when I read things about diversity online. Like the BBC, for example, recently announced they were extending their efforts to improve the diversity, right? And so many of the comments online about that were saying things like, don't hire somebody because of their skin color, hire someone because they're the right person, the best person to hire. And then you see casting news like this, where a man of color might be hired to play Severus Snape. And so many of the comments are, he's not white, he can't play Snape, stop forcing diversity. But how do you know he wasn't the best person who auditioned? That he didn't nail Snape's cruelty, his moral conflictions, his slimy idiosyncrasies. Just feels like there's a lot of mental gymnastics. You either want the best person for the job or you don't. And until we see the show and we have a reason to doubt their casting abilities, we need to put our faith in the casting people. Now listen, people might have criticisms about the casting beyond him not being white, and those criticisms I would be willing to listen to. He seems very handsome and Snape is not supposed to be handsome, he's meant to be an odd-looking outsider. Beyond that, I'm struggling to think of any other criticisms. My personal opinion, a big deal breaker for me on the Snape casting and all the Marauders was their age, right? They needed to be the right age to tell their stories appropriately as they are in the books. And he is, he's in his mid-30s. And I also think this point from Morgan at Movie Flame is solid. This is a very different casting to Alan Rickman and people were always going to struggle not to compare the new Snape to Alan Rickman's Snape. So this feels like a great move to separate the TV show from the movie. He's also got plenty of experience, right? He was a big part in Gangs of London, The Lazarus Project. He even played Hamlet for the Royal Shakespeare Company. And I think stage experience for an actor is so helpful, particularly roles like this. Like if you think about the films, Kenneth Branagh, who played Lockhart, Emma Thompson, who played Trelawney, Fiona Shaw, who played Petunia, David Thewlis, who played Lupin, Michael Gambon, who played Dumbledore, Alan Rickman himself, they all had vast stage experience, and I think it shows. From the way characters like Snape and Dumbledore move across the sets, to the way they deliver their lines, they put emphasis on certain words. There's like a bravado, right? An old school pride that I think you see more in like classic stage theater than from actors who have only really ever been on film sets. And you know what? This chap has done it all. If all the rumors are true and he has been cast as Snape, I'm excited to see what he does. And if you wanna hear my other thoughts about the Harry Potter TV show, you can watch this video next.